This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Let me tell you the story of our family, and my wife isn't less, and she doesn't feel like she's less because she's chosen this. I think that would have landed a little bit differently. He gave that commencement speech, and so they knew what they were getting, and they knew that it was good for their people, and the... They're, not, they're not the ones complaining, by no, the way. Yeah. No, you could read the Bible yeah. as like, this is what needs to be done exactly, or you, let's look at it like a wisdom literature. The Proverbs, this proverb says this. Does that mean it always applies? Not necessarily. Where are your values? What are you caring most about? Are you caring most about checking the boxes of politeness? Or are you caring mo- mostly about people? Now, those things don't have to be in opposition. The way I use like on this podcast, I say like a lot. The way my mind works, I get scrambled a little bit. I got a little bit of dyslexia. And so I'll like... It's a little buffer yeah, time. F- <laughs> it. Yeah, say it. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to episode 238. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Where am I going? It's been a while. I'm Jeff. Andy, how's it going? I no longer look like a Family Guy character. No idea. (laughs) Zach? I agree. (laughs) And how about you, Jeffrey? I'm at the tail end of work. It's fantastic. Oh. Oh, God. Is it just me, or is that really cranking? That's all right. Yeah, it feels good, though. Nice. Hey, uh, you owe us a drink since you just said fantastic. Oh, that's true. I think that's on the list. Or do we all just drink? If I say interesting and you say fantastic, that's an automatic take a sip. Then I'm going to go with amazing. If I say family guy... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, what's with the family guy The thing? reason I said that is because I was realizing I've been watching our episodes, <laughs> and I'm like, man... Dude, I've got... Oh, shoot. I forgot to hit the thing. Hold on. Stand by. I'll get us there. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, Someone fill in. By the way, we have no producer tonight, so I'm also playing producer. (laughs) All right. Well, this is Bros, Bibles, and Beer, and where we do serious... Do. We do. We have serious conversations on faith and culture, whilst not taking ourselves too seriously. Um, So you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, your favorite podcast app, uh, YouTube, subscribe, rate, review, all the things, and we like to read those. You can also leave us a voicemail at www.speakpipe.com slash bros. Was, was the front end done AI version whilst? Whilst. Whilst. I like to use the King's English occasionally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of language, I think we're going to get into a little bit of language on today's episode, aren't we? Yeah. Why we cuss. Oh, uh, yes. And if it's okay Is or it okay? not. Yeah. Golly gosh darn G, it's not. Maybe we have some confessions to do, maybe some repenting. A la, you know, we we'll baptize ourselves in our beard to repent of our cussing. Well, that's fudging great. So uh, my, my family guy comment, um, I was looking at some of the episodes and I'm like, man, what, what's going on with my eyes? They like weird, like just puffy and like dark circles. And so uh, I cleaned the carpets in the house and, uh, and I've also gone dry for like four days. And one of those two things in this terrible uh, experiment where I have no control, uh, it, I think is helping. Yeah. Well, regard whatever is happening, the fruit of it, the fruit of whatever you did is resulting in less puff. Yeah, thank you. And that's the thing. All those family guy <laughs> characters are droon. Droon. You're droon. <laughs> with those eyes that are all bubbly. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. That's information that was maybe uh, TMI. All right. Well, do you have a rapid fire? No. I do. You do? <laughs> of course I do. Oh, wow. Of course. All right. Well, um, Swing. I w- <laughs> we're going to do the rapid fire, but like we said, we are going to maybe, we've gotten a lot of feedback related to not only the drinking and being visible, dr- visibly drinking, but also language by our guests and by us. Um, and so we, we're going to talk about why cussing might not be so bad, uh, but you can do your own math on that. And then maybe we'll get to a little Harrison Butker Kicks wide right? Question mark. And we, oh. might even, we might even get into I like some that. heresy <laughs> with the language thing. Who knows? Yeah, but also a shout out to a couple subscribers to the YouTube channel: Frank Beeler, Danger, Kulina, Brandon Zimmerman. There were others too, but it's tough to keep track of all this stuff, you know. Man, that's awesome! Thank you for subscribing. We appreciate you, and the comments are some of our favorite things. We we were talking about this uh, recently that like for so many years. 
being audio only, we didn't have a great like venue to be able to no, like didn't. engage with people. And we would ask and we would kind of beg, beg for it. And then Spotify kind of started working in a comment section and well, not a lot of people like mm. leaving reviews and stuff. It just felt like cumbersome. And then ever since going to Spotify. Well, I remember we used to tell people like, if you go there, then you click on that and then you click on that and then download an app. Yeah. It, yeah. it was like a horrible <laughs> scavenger hunt. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Ask your neighbor if they have a brown crowbar. <laughs> By now. <laughs> and 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 so now. And so now being able to just go straight to the comment section in YouTube, it's easy. It's like baked into the process that everyone's just been used to. And and also we're getting quite a bit on this on Instagram too, right? Oh yeah. Yes, uh, we did. We do have a video that is currently, bl- for our purposes, blowing up. It's probably over ninety thousand views right now. Uh, one of the reels regarding the plagiarizing pastor apology, uh, Josh Howerton. Yeah. Um. Who? I mean, I suppose we should do a tiny bit of housekeeping. He did say that he's friends with the gentleman that he basically copied his apology, and he said, "Yeah, he 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 helped me through it." And basically, Dave Millsap was right. He said, that's not a plagiarism. That's a reenactment. <laughs> so basically, he just did what the other guy did with his permission. But I don't know if it makes it better. It just means you're not really that, sorry. That does so, not make it better. Yeah. So yeah, not a full plagiarist. All right. You do your own math. But that's a fun one that, to go on there. Tons of comments and tons of new followers on Instagram. So that's been uh, fun to watch. So now you've got uh, a little something for us that you pulled up um, specifically regarding cussing, swearing, yes. as Christians, podcast or not. Yes, but Oops. Jeff has a rapid fire. And okay. is this the one where, what if, what if I were to take that list, Jeff, that you prepared for one of us and we read them back to you? No. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> that was a hard no. No. <laughs> However, we could go back and forth. Yeah. You guys don't want to rock, paper, scissors. You yeah, can, start with Andy and we'll just switch off questions. Or, or maybe you can answer them both. Like, actually, this is a two-parter, so somebody get the front end, somebody get the back end. Who's getting the front end? I love the back end. <laughs> so this is the, this, <laughs> this is the Jesus version of give me liberty or give me death. So what would Jesus version be? This is kind of like a, a card game where, okay, I've got the uh, word and then I got to pair it up with another word. So... Andy or Zach, who wants to go first? Jesus would say, give me death <laughs> or give me Wait, I, I don't think I understand. So we're it's filling like, in the blanks. Yeah, yeah you okay. just fill in the blanks. Right. What was that? Mad Libs? Yeah, yeah, Mad Libs. It's Mad Libs. So give me death or give me creamsicles. All right, go ahead. All right, thank you, Jesus version of that. Creamsicles. Um, if stealing is a sin, oh, this is for baseball fans. If stealing is a sin, why aren't fast baseball players, especially Ellie De La Cruz, going to hell? Because they thieve bags all the time. Oh, he might run right past heaven <laughs> and like then right fall off heaven. into hell. What about people who say, Jesus has stolen my heart? I don't know about those. I don't know who those people are. I, I might have just inv- I might be the only person who's ever said that. Oh my god, I love that. Can we actually talk? Let's create a real on <laughs> Jesus stole your heart is Jesus in sin. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. But yeah. hey, if if the listener doesn't know who Ellie L L L E De La Cruz, Cincinnati Reds baseball player. If you're not familiar with sports ball, he's on pace for like over a hundred stolen bases and forty home runs. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and that was that reference. Yeah, that's you know, my commentating on baseball. Uh, God's favorite animal, the woodchuck or the beaver? Oh, beaver all the way. Zebra. 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 <laughs> Just <laughs> throwing an audible. Why the zebra? Oh, you know. Okay. Because you know the beaver took took the cross down after Jesus died and, and rose again. It. And ate it and created something beautiful out of it. So okay. resurrection continued through the majesty of the beaver. I honestly thought uh, the woodchuck could chuck wood, and I'm oh, like, he okay. would help. He would help Jesus. I like that. Build some stuff. Also, I don't think I've ever used the words together. The majesty of the beaver, <laughs> but I'm I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, Zach, this is for you. What make or bully? What makes a great beer? Copious amounts of hops with even more copious amounts of malt to balance it out. 
And of course, a good strain of yeast. Oh, fantastic. Uh, oh, shit, I got a drink. Oh, <laughs> and I cuss. And I cuss. <laughs> oh, man. I do like a good IPA with lots of hops, but a good malt Andy, backbone. I agree with that, and I'll add to it. Wait, I was going to ask you a different question, but go ahead. With a couple of good bros sitting around. Oh, the social go. aspect. Just cold, but not too cold. Fantastic. <laughs> I'll drink again later. Okay. Uh, Andy. Yes. What would Jesus type of beer been if he was here right now? Oh, Jesus type of beer? Clearly a Czech Pilsner. All right. Because he'd want you to check your sins at the door. I was going to say that <clears throat> the that that beautiful docent brewing company, they have the Rube, which is a yes. red rye oh, ale, yeah. and that color is just like Jesus' blood. Oh, my goodness. We're really Jesus going would deep. drink the really blood. Really going deep. Uh, he, he would drink his own blood beer? <laughs> Question mark? Okay. We're going down. We're, we're turning third base, right? Okay. Headed to home. Heading home. Uh, do you think you could fake being a Mormon? Either one of you. Yes. Uh, if you walked into the Mormon Tabernacle in Salt Lake, Utah, and they needed to, and they needed ID to prove your Mormonhood, and you don't have it, how do you figure your way out of it to stay? Do uh, what am I wearing? You're already wearing those those PJs, the garments. Yeah, I, I don't want to be disrespectful. What are they? They're undergarments. Like I'm sure there's a word for them. Sorry, Jeff Whitney, former guest, uh, and we'll check in with you and ask you. Yeah, what, I think they are just called undergarments. Former Mormon. I was more like talking about the the cool tie. No, I, I, yes, I've got you. But okay. I don't think I can even fake being nice enough. Mormons are just super nice. They're okay, great well, people. Okay, well let's just start with. A good Mormon last name. It can't be Smith. So what will your last names be? You're Mormon. I don't know. Is there Mormon names? Mormon last names? I don't think there are. Not the Hatfields and McCoys or anything like that? Um, I'll, I'll go with Blanket. <laughs> Part of the Jackson family? What, just, what happened? <laughs> oh, wait, are you talking first names or last <laughs> names? Last name. Just one name. <laughs> like just blanket. What, what is that? I'll go with Seal. <laughs> Call me Seal. Blanket and Seal. <sighs> oh so, okay, gosh. now someone's asking you last two questions. Well, what was your mission work, Andy? Oh, uh, I was in... Uh, Cincinnati. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Shoot with Chris Tomlin. We were doing no I Chris missed. Tomlin. Oh my Zach, gosh. Okay, what's your wife's name? Skateboard ministry. Who is the largest Mormon pop Come on. singer? No, who is, is your they ask you? Last question. What is your wife's name? You're gonna stay. Are you gonna stay? What's your la what's your wife's name? Lisa? Wrong. You've got nine wives. Get out of here. No oh. Well, All right. Okay. I like okay. Polygamy jokes. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Um, a little bit of feedback on that. You make us think about them. It's just too hard to think about them. Just get me to react. Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's just hard make, to know. I can't. I can't even. All right. Um, we want to talk about swearing. Is it time? Yeah. The list is right there. This is David Hayward. You may have seen me. Uh, I like to wear a billboard shirt. Is that what you call them, Andy? Yeah. Or a bumper sticker shirt, something what? like that. No. I don't know. A okay. shirt that, that has a point to it. Oh, yeah. Like, hey. This is Scott the Painter. Oh, I love the cameras. Not there, there you go. go. All right. <laughs> nice. The robot knows. Scott the Painter, uh, um, Scott Erickson, the Trinity. They shall know we are Christians by our t-shirts. Yes. Uh, David Hayward, also known as the Naked Pastor, at Naked Pastor. He's not actually naked. I think he's just trying to be raw and honest. Uh but he's got good artwork. I, I, I wear several, a few of his shirts and whatnot. And he had this post on swearing. Do, do you want me to grab this and start reading? Or I, I can it's, see it from here. Okay. Number okay. one. Uh, so sometimes people, um, oh yeah, I'm just going to release. For many of us, we find using swear words incredibly releasing. Venting our anger or pain or joy is more powerful with swear words. There are studies showing Swearing decreases physical and emotional pain. You read that so weird. What was that? What was that voice? I think he was like thinking about what he's going to say as he's reading it. So he went into standby AI mode or something. I think you were releasing while you were. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, let me. I'll get you a towel. <laughs> wait, what kind of room? Wait, wait, what? Post, post release. <laughs> What is, what is happening? Uh, His body is cussing. <clears throat> okay, so we've got pent up frustration and swearing can be a way to release some of that pressure. It's a pressure release valve. Yeah, and I, I could make an argument that even people that don't swear have words they use to release that said pressure. And it's just not the technical like, you know, shoot or screw. Yeah. But it's uh, maybe it's actually shoot or screw. Uh, and I think I think there you can make an argument that it's cussing like it's it's relative like what words are considered cussing is going to change from culture to culture yeah you say you drop the word fanny in, <gasps> the, in the UK and that's right. that's a really bad word over there it's not a really bad word it well, just means lady parts right but then they'll also say cunt like it <laughs> no you're you're right <laughs> You're right, and it's some an, it's things, normal. Some things are relative. It's normal there. Not everything is is relative. Over here, Fanny is. <laughs> I'm gonna slap you on the Fanny if you keep this up. You know, over sometimes. here, Trump grabs him by the Fanny. That's yeah. <laughs> over there, yeah. Over here, over there. Yes, and the, then the C word, which I don't know why I'm censoring at this point. Yeah. Sorry, listener. This is gonna just deal with it. Yeah. You need a drink for apologizing. For, You're right. This is your okay. show. Okay, I definitely have, for sure, none of us would say this one feels controversial. Whether it's right or wrong, this is a reason. This is like a motivation to do it. Yeah. To swear. Yeah. And by the way, generally my swearing is private. I don't make, I don't do it too much around the house. Uh, around my wife, I, I do. And I'm not worried about that, but. And on YouTube in front of hundreds of thousands yeah. of people. Yeah. And, you know, but that's something my kids can't, nobody can see, really. <laughs> somehow, like, these people, you're all my friends, but somehow it's like, we still feel comfortable here. So, whatever. So, I, I had someone years ago, it was a father, I was coaching his daughter in soccer, and they invited me over to the house and sitting around, they daughter was playing with her sister and, and she said ship and the dad they were christian family he's like why don't you just say it it's in your heart oh i like that and i thought i have no idea what's going on i, I really had no idea i mean i knew i know that logic what was yeah. going on but, from my past but the the heart thing i'm like what out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you may have heard that the intent was so we just altered it. But it was like the idea of, I'm not saying a bad word. So I'm just, it could be anything. Crickets. <clears throat> oh, you might as well just say a bad word if you're angry. I'm not exactly sure. Just say it, you hate me. I mean, to say shit. From this and, point forward, every time you say crickets, we know it's at Andy. How about that? I'm going to start saying crickets when I'm angry. Ah, crickets. <laughs> With an accent. Uh... Okay, that, that whole abundance, can I tell you a funny story about sure. that? When I was in high school, I actually was a pretty good kid in high school. I think I, I there's what a hap handful of times where like I had one or two beers with friends, but nothing was ever super questionable. One night, we heard that some kids from the youth group were having a party out at one of the pastor, he owned some property that was, this is in Bakersfield, like way out in the boonies. And they were going to have a party out there and there's going to be a keg. And and I went, drove out there with a couple of friends and middle of the night, not middle of the night, it's pretty late though. And so we're cruising out there and walking around and just hanging out. I don't even think I had a beer. In fact, I think the keg was empty by the time I was there. So, you know, at this, I was like 16 maybe. And it's just fun. You're like, ooh, we're out here doing, doing stuff people shouldn't know about dangerous and then these cars pull up and the pastors of the church get out Ooh, police and, pastors and we like run back to my friend's car and jump in and holy she, crickets she's driving us out <laughs> and i'm like go i start swearing i'm like go get this fuck out of here and and we pull up and the pastor is right next to the passenger window where i am <laughs> and he's like I think you should go home, Andy. <laughs> oh, first name. Yeah, no, and then at some point, 
he did give me the out of the heart, <laughs> out of the abundance Thanks. of the heart. The mouth will speak, and I'm like, well, I was fucking scared, man. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> You know what's funny about the not funny is the That's wrong adjective. Uh, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I mean, yes, that can apply to to cussing and and whatnot. But I think a lot of times it could re- it could apply to that church face Sunday morning church face type thing where you're you're presenting a certain yeah. way, um, but then what's going on inside eventually gets betrayed um, by what you say when you're frustrated or. Whether, whether or not it's cussing, maybe you get angry at your spouse and you say a couple things that sure. you've been like burying deep inside. Um, this isn't related to a, a recent story on my end, just so you know. Uh, but we probably all have <laughs> versions of that where it's like, yeah, what's going on inside will come out and you can say, I didn't mean it. But it's like, nah, oftentimes y- y- there's something going on there that needs to be addressed. So Totally hypothetical. Say one of us is not taking the trash out regularly. It's just hypothetical, and the dishes are just seem to continue to pile up. Toilet seats, am I right? I mean, we need to put them down every time. Seems like a Seinfeld bet. How bit. come ladies don't have to put them up for us? I when know. They're done? Don't bring that argument up. Hey, uh, you know what, though? <laughs> to any lady. The patriarchy is real, so we can compromise and put the seat down. <laughs> doing, that, doing that at the office, I could, could you imagine... Like, cause we have, we have a couple of bathrooms that are either, uh, it's not unisex. Non, yeah. Unisex bathrooms. <laughs> can you imagine if I'm walking in and some ladies walking out? I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> could you please leave the seat up? <laughs> uh, that's a fun bit idea. Yes. Um, freedom. Many of us have come out of controlling environments. Deconstruction includes freeing ourselves from oversight. Swearing is an expression of our freedom. Having been in a culture where even our words were police, swearing is a declaration of independence. And um, I can see that. And I, I think I've, I've felt that. I certainly feel more free to express myself in colorful language. And my stance on cussing, and I've mentioned this on the podcast with my girls, talking about language in general, is like, yeah. how are you using your words? You can you can tear someone to pieces using totally non swear words. Yeah, you can ruin somebody's life, um, and you can use swear words to build up and actually bond with people. Uh, so it's like, what is the fruit of your swearing? Like, wh- what is it getting you or taking away from you or your your community? So it's the spirit of the the word in context because cuss words. Today we're not cuss words fifty years ago. And you guys remember that restaurant, the Jolly Roger? Yeah. yeah. Been there, done well, that. There's what a movie it? quote where it's like, I'll give her a good Rogering. Oh, right. Roger was basically the F word, I think, in England back in the day. And it became a name, a dude's name that nobody names them their kids anymore. We'll have to go and look at what's the etym- et- et- etymology et- etymology of the word. <laughs> I'm not gonna look that up. Uh, I will if somebody <laughs> wants to talk for a while. <laughs> I want to. I want to Google myself. Right, there is freedom in that. That can also be abused. Oh, just absolutely. like anything, like yeah. freedom. It's not, you know, just because you were saved doesn't mean you get to be an asshole. Uh, the freedom to to drink can yeah. be abused. Sure, like, like it's all good things. I've can got. Be abused. I've got a thought about this. That I'll wait. Jeff will drink to that till till we get through. And I don't know if we'll get need to get through all. No, of we don't need to. Oh my gosh! If you want to cherry pick one that's that you really liked, that you thought was would uh, could respond to all the listeners that don't like us um, swearing, and then we can make them go uh, send their vitriol towards the naked pastor. Come on, Zach. Andy can only stretch this out <laughs> so long. Oh, was I supposed to be looking up <laughs> the Jolly Roger? No, no, no. no. Just, just pick one. Uh, pick no. one of the next ones. Go um, down the reason for cussing. Adulting. That's number three. We're just going in order? Okay, go ahead. Well, it's a decent one. This is the okay. way most adults talk. Not all. Adults swear because they can. It's normal. Some people judge those who swear by suggesting they are less intelligent and resort to lazy language. But I know very intelligent people swear and less intelligent people who don't. And this is just... It, it is kind of like like basic. Like, don't... It just depends. It's, it's one of those things. It's like, read the Bible. You could read the Bible yeah. as like, this is what needs to be done exactly. Or you could look at these passages and like, okay, 
let's look at it like a wisdom literature. The Proverbs, this proverb says this. Does that mean it always applies? Not necessarily. And so, wisdom. I, okay, but here's a, I think a better question is in church, the pastor swears at the pulpit in the middle of a sermon, a message. I think Driscoll's what's, done that. What's, what is the reaction? Depends. It just that it, in my mind, that's all. It's all about the context. I don't remember if it, if it was Driscoll, but I did. I know there was a pastor that made waves. I, I know Driscoll did this, but this specific thing, I don't remember exactly what they were talking about. But they were trying to draw. I know what it is. Okay, I think it's Tony Campolo. That sounds right. And he said something to the effect of, <clears throat> um, "Every day, uh, I'll make this up. Ten thousand kids." die of starvation and you don't give a shit. And what disappoints me most is that you care more about the fact that I said the word shit than you do about those 10,000 kids. Mm. Yep. Which is true. Pro- yeah, probably. For for most of those people there, they're probably like, he just, he yeah. just said shit in church. Well, yeah, the, Im- the importance of the message and then some word in far as you're concerned or the pastor's concerned is ancillary. It's just, it's a trivial thing in what is actually being spoken. And it's actually putting people and having them reflect like, Oh, he's right. Yeah. His point wasn't about swearing. His point was yeah. about where, where are your values? Mm-hmm. What do you, what are you caring most about? Are you caring most about uh, checking the boxes of politeness or are you caring mo- mostly about people? Now, those things don't have to be in opposition. Like you don't have to choose between right. the two, but yeah, I, I, it's a, he used it as a, like a mechanism, a speaking, a tool to grab and he grabbed and he and grabbed. He's, and he's been, it's still been grabbing. He's been grabbing nonstop since then. Yeah. That grab has gone decades. I said, my way to grab her. That was a terrible one. I've, uh, our former pastor, I've, I've seen, uh, cuss twice. Twice, uh, once on a Sunday and once at a men's retreat. And both of them, I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, men's retreat's different. It's all it's all guys up in the mountains. Yeah, we're like doing baby oil and like wrestling. Oh, yeah. Um, I did. Wait, I, did t- I didn't go to those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a secret session. <laughs> that before. <laughs> that was a secret <laughs> sin session. That <laughs> secret sin session. Are you going to the triple? Gonna, please, del- we'll edit that out. That's. That's Are not you a going good thought. To the triple S <laughs> later? <laughs> what? No, I'm going to sleep. Uh, <laughs> Can you uh, hand me another hop? Well, actually, water? sleep is the third S in the triple S yeah. session. So. I, I told it's the fourth S. I told a story to another Christian who goes to a different church in a totally different part of the state. Um, a story where, and as I was in the middle of the story, I'm like, yeah, and the pastor was like, that is crap. Blah, blah. But as I kept going on with the story, after I said crap, I then heard, audibly, her be like, oh. About the word Reacting crap. to crap. Crap was a bridge too far. Yeah, uh, for which, her. Which, th- so that, that leads to, and maybe I'll read his conclusion after this and we can, we can move on. Uh, when you're in a new situation, like the default is like awareness, social awareness. Yeah, totally. Like go to what's most acceptable in front of 99% of people. Crap wouldn't, <laughs> I would not have chambered crap in this situation because who freaks out about that? So that might've got me in trouble with her too. Right. But I, I'm not going to speak like I do on this podcast, like in in the church that we go to because not because I'm being inauthentic, just no, I know it will throw people and they don't have to listen to our podcast and plenty of people True. stumbled upon our podcast and realized like, Oh my God, they're cuss. Oh, they wouldn't say, Oh my God. They say, Oh my gosh. So yeah, and, and, context. We're all, and we're all adults. So everybody out there realizes that why you go into a church or when you're in an environment where like, this is a Christian environment. So everybody needs to talk a certain way. It was like, I like really? that. That's my <laughs> new favorite voice of yours. Really? That was almost Jim Gaffigany. That was great. <laughs> uh, wait, <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know why. Are these guys, are these guys Christians? Are they even talking about Christian things? I totally lost my train of thought. They so. probably put booze in hot pockets. <laughs> And then okay, they, and then they cuss on. when they burn their mouths. I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Good. 
You missed an episode. F you. <laughs> My feelings are hurt. So what if it was your wife's birthday? Sex, stop doing the to me. Yeah. Okay. But go ahead. But you're right. Like use appropriate expectations for the setting that you're in. Right. I, I, have, I swear at work every once in a while. But you but wouldn't open up a can presentation of like, oh. let's get this shit on. You guys sit down. This is going to be amazing. Be like, <laughs> I just I just watch Idiocracy with my kids, of course. <laughs> oh, which is a running theme. <laughs> yeah, this is Zach's vocabulary session. Let's watch Idiocracy. Oh we'll and pause. For, for those that know, President Camacho um, starts a speech and he starts it with <laughs> shit. And then it goes behind <laughs> him and you see the teleprompter and that's the, it's like literally written out. And that just made me laugh when you said that, Jeff. So I feel like you only need to watch the first 20 minutes of that movie <laughs> and you're, you got everything that you need and it's all true now. Yeah. So, uh, David Hayward closes it out, close is it out with, there are probably a lot more reasons to swear, but who needs a reason? Why do we need to police our words? Of course, I want to only say things that are helpful, honest, and true. I want to speak in ways that build up the good, bring down the bad. If swearing helps me do that, then I will. Out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Swearing can be a healthy part of that process. And to that, I say amen. I did want to add one one thing. Do it. Which is, um, there is a point where... Uh, swear words can be powerful. They can be used in very powerful ways. And and if it's just... If used in a, little increments. Exactly. So if you're, if you're just every it's other like word... It's like a child. If you're just using every other word and like it's, it's like breathing, it becomes a comma in your sentences, then it loses right. all power. And, and you tend to lose respect for those, those people as yeah, well. Yeah, this is yeah. a good point. Yeah, you... It's a powerful word because it it doesn't get used that often. It's yeah, saved. Yeah, I like that. And so if you if it is used intentionally, the way I use like on this podcast, which every time I listen back to this podcast, don't feel bad. I do, but I I say like a lot because I'm just thinking my mind. It's the way my mind works. I get scrambled a little bit. I got a little bit of dyslexia, and so I'll like. It's a little buffer time. Yeah, I just fucking did it. <laughs> yeah, say it. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. I think I just proved my point. That was God, that was damn. so fantastic. Oh. I'm working on it, believe it or not. I can so. see the I can see the buffering just like <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. Yeah. Dude. Anyway, yes, the point that I think we all agree on is like uh don't be loose with it. Don't don't say it like you're just breathing out all the time. That that's that's what's always happening. Yeah, no. I think that's the loose lips of just f this shoot shoot. F, boop, boop, boop. It's like, uh, dude, I don't think I can be in a conversation with you because I it's just it just is a little too crass. For yeah, my, for my liking. Yeah, and everyone has their degrees of crassness. So obviously, like some of our listeners and viewers that like us using it occasionally. I think we use it for emphasis and sometimes just because it's funny. Yep. Because swear words can be funny too. They can be. This is true. Okay. All right. Do we want to move on? Yeah. Should we? Uh, what do you guys know about Harrison Butker? Uh, Fantastic heard- field goal kicker. Well, drink up, boy. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I said the F word again. <laughs> Speaking of the F word, dang, that's what I should have just said right there. That would have been great. <laughs> Actually, I was going to Google Jolly Roger. I forgot to do that. Maybe I'll get to that. We'll give her the old Jolly Roger. So he's the kicker for the Kansas City Bears, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sports ball. Uh, Chiefs, right? For some yes, reason, he's I keep thinking of him as Baltimore, but no. that's sacrilegious to the Chiefs fans. Um, Sorry, Brian Zond. Brian Zond is a pretty famous pastor as well as a diehard Chiefs fan. So he uh, he did a commencement address for a Catholic college whose name we'll, we'll see when we start playing this video. Mm. Um, 
and it, it created quite the kicker kerfuffle. Um, it really kicked it off, didn't it? Yeah. Speaking of that, I'm going to go put on my producer hat real yep. quick. You're going to have to forgive Andy. He'll be up and down and uh, starting this picture in picture. Yeah, this has got this has gotten traction. A lot of it, and just taking those little sound bites, the social media, big media, and and then everywhere in between, just taking that, running with it, on something that they they just lost. <clears throat> Let's do it. Sure. So he, he people were calling this uh, miso- some the critics were seeing it as misogynistic and um, maybe anti, maybe even anti woman. But let's see what he had to ben- say in the in the part yeah. that people are freaking out about most. Yeah. Benedictine College. Thank you. By your example, for the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel... Cue baby crying. that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school. There's no crying. Become my wife and embrace. I love that emotion. Titles of all, homemaker. All right, you could probably pause it. Yeah, I think you can come back, Andy. All right, I'll come back. We'll release we'll you from your it. producer duty. Oh, and uh, you could probably ditch the screen. Good job, Andy. So, first thoughts, because I'm sure you've had thoughts, because this has been uh, about two weeks, ten so days, something I, like I that. I heard. I'm decently, while we don't post often on social media, besides just updating our show, you get the Zach Crater Award for bumping the microphone. Gosh, I am, what I'm noticing is that you're, these microphones are way more sensitive. Not important. Keep going. Yeah. So what I, in, in seeing the kerfuffle online, and I will keep using that word, uh, it has been like, okay, let me go and look at this clip. Yeah, because the way people are freaking out, I'm like, "What did he say? What did he really say?" Yeah, and then I I see the little clip, and it's like, I think his biggest mistake. And if if anyone listens to this podcast for any degree of time, like I'm not the most conservative member of this podcast. Um, however, I'm my first thought was like, "Yeah, he's a Catholic speaking at a Catholic college, saying kind of." traditional things that most Americans generally are sympathetic to. Mm -hmm. I think his biggest mistake was he, he sort of made it a universal thing towards women in general. If he would have just made it about his story with his wife and like his emotion, I love that. And I love that for them and talking about her. And he goes on to actually talk to, because I actually listened to this, this whole thing or watched the whole thing. Yeah. Unlike most people, I think, um, he goes on to talk more about their specific circumstance, their marriage and how she, I think she got her degree and then, and so she had plans career wise, but then homemaking became the thing. Yeah. Which is awesome. Also, it's something that's very easy to do when your husband is an NFL star. Um, Tell me about it. Most, (laughs) your husband. (laughs) (laughs) It's dumb. I, I got, I got more to say, I'm sure, but, but it was kind of like, okay, I I have zero problem with like a woman having a vocation of like, I want to be a homemaker. I want to be a mom. I want to be a full-time mom and wife. And, yeah. and my husband, you know, takes care of the bills and all that stuff. And I do this. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think most people generally agree with that sentiment. I think the mistake was, if there is one in this case, is like, he was like talking to all these women that are getting their degrees right now. Like, 
yeah, maybe, maybe you want to think about just going back home kind of a thing. I could see how it was taken like that. And it was taken like that with some people. And like the, I think a lot of people want to be offended and are looking to be outraged. And we've been a little bit guilty that we do that a little bit on the show, talking about some of the latest controversies in Christianity. We're, you know, it's a thing, but. I think anytime you have something like this, the haters come out. They're just waiting for something. Just give us something, especially when it comes to God and Christianity and uh, the sexes. And, uh, you know, if someone's like, oh, the male should lead or the male should provide or he should protect or it's like all of a sudden it's just hate, hate, hate. And and that is just the way the world is working right now, um, just because we have social media. And it just, it doesn't stop. It gives people a, a millisecond to get on their phone and go. Uh, and, and I think the pendulum, like it swings back and forth in culture. So if we like rewind to the fifties, traditional house housewife was kind of like the, the blueprint for um, Western culture in general. And then sexual revolution comes along and uh, birth control frankly, is is one of the key things that made it possible for then women to uh, consider uh, I got more options. More options. They can have they could have a full-time career without having to um, always be at home with the kids. And, and so that pendulum has swung all the way to the other side and saying, in fact, to the point where um, there, the influence in in culture now says you should suppress any of as a female you should suppress any of those feelings that you have of wanting to be a mother wanting to stay at home raise kids um be be a homemaker i think that's the word that he, he used to describe it you should suppress those because for some reason that's viewed as negative that's that's or not as valuable as having you know insert career name it's complete in here. psychological warfare is what it is. Well, I think it was it was like you said a pendulum swing. I, I know there are so, like let's take away the radical both sides of the people that have agendas and whatnot. The reaction to like it, it wasn't until the seventies when women could open their own credit card. Congratulations, women! You can uh, you can go into crippling debt like the rest of us. <laughs> but welcome to the world. <laughs> but it's like th- th- those types of. Pro- progressions that I think are good, well, I know are good, uh, where women can do the things that they weren't allowed to do before, and like you mentioned, both birth control giving them the freedom. Uh, it it's a reaction to some of the like, no, you have this is your role, you must stay here, and you don't have a choice. And guess what? If you're back, say in the fifties, or just take it back to Bible times. If you're a woman and you are with somebody that is a terrible human being, you were fucked. And I love the use of that word right there because you didn't have any options. You didn't have any education. You often couldn't read or write. Sure. And, and so you were totally limited. And that is like the distant cousin of a lot of these gender conversations now. And so it doesn't mean all the pendulum swings have been good, like the pendulum swings too far, right? But some of it has resulted in things landing in a in a better place. Well, and what's what I think it, where what I have a problem with is in either direction, it's the suppression of like the natural desires of the individual. So, in, if in the fifties there was there were women who were like, I, but I really feel passion. I do want to be a doctor or a nurse or a teacher. I would like to do these things. I feel drawn to it. There, there was a level of suppression then. Now that you would say that it had flipped around, the level of suppression is well, yeah, but I, I would like to really be a mom and raise my kids and be there for them through their childhood and not have someone else raise my kids. Yep. And that is one could say is being suppressed. Now there is this like, have you seen this like under under um, current of trad wives? Have you heard this this uh, phrase before, no. Zach? Have you heard that trad wives? I haven't heard. Yes. That. Okay. So trad wives is like traditional traditional wives. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but there, but it's been hashtagified. And how old did I sound right there? These kids have been hashtagifying it, <laughs> and now what's next? They're going to be at signs. It's still not as old as Jeff's, but <laughs> I, I was little. like the old prospector there. 
We took them down to, to hashtag Gulch. By the way, trad wife is a thing on like Twitter yeah. or, and or X and and uh, uh, TikTok where these influencers are basically living a fantasy life of like the perfect classic housewife. And I don't think it's for women. I think it's for men that wish their women were oh, the perfect traditional wife. Um, there is some of that, but some of it's genuine too. I've this. Oh, I've Probably. seen a lot of the stuff that is genuine. That's not meant. To- I've seen some that's like, okay, I, I see what you're doing. You're wearing a conservative gown. You're homemaking. You're cleaning. You're cooking. And there's just like just just a hint of cle- like it's it's done in a way where it's like, I. I see what you're doing and I think it's fake and I think it's gross and, and I have no problem with somebody being a traditional housewife but you think they're fake and gross <laughs> <laughs> that's right you heard me <laughs> those are you, those are your words I didn't say it you said it fake and gross traditional housewife Zach Crater at <laughs> brosbiblesbeer.com backslash AOL I don't think I don't think Harrison Butker was in the wrong at all I mean he's speaking to he's speaking at a Catholic college and, and, and I mean, we need tradition. We need traditional families. That's sure. I mean, that is the way that society thrives. And if we don't have that, if we keep pushing it away, it's literally the way the, the, the population, the, grows. The, 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 the Bible, the Bible is disappearing. The following Christ is disappearing. Um, having traditional family is disappearing and it's, it's a war. It's a psychological war. Social media has been harnessed to just destroy uh, families. It's destroy women from being who they were created to be, which was childbearers, and to bring life into this world. And men are under attack. And Harrison Butker getting up there because there's other parts of that speech where he's like, "We need to, we need to not back away from being masculine men." And that resonated with me. Like, if we don't have that, then we have weak men and we have women just trying to fill the voids because yeah. social media is telling them to. Yeah. And that is not a good place to be. Not in, not for a good society. And things are unraveling. Yes, yeah, I saw some of the pushback, even from Christian sources, uh, was... Like, why didn't he talk about being, he he mentioned the women, women, you can do this or think about doing this. Like, why didn't you go the man route? And he did like later on in the mm. commencement speech, which isn't that long. It's 20 minutes. It's, it's worth your time just to get the full context. It might, if you're a little bit enraged by it, it might dial that back a little bit. Like, I disagree with him. Like, I disagree with the template of like women should be there. He doesn't technically say like women should go home. A lot no. of people are reading that into it. And if that was in his intent, I disagree with that. I think the beauty of freedom is, and the beauty of all these options are that women can do things in a, in a way that they haven't been able to do for most sure. of history. Now, the more that happens to your point, Jeff, about the traditional family, like that's, that's how babies are made as a man and woman come together. Like until the lab figures out all that stuff, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, and that's a good thing. And so I have seen a lot of people pushing back in a way that I like, which is if he just made it about him and his wife, it would have been just gold because he's, he's not prescripting it for anyone else. And in a way that would just distract less from his point, which is like, my wife had a plan, which was have a career. She got her degree. And then we created this family together and things changed for her and she's thriving and she loves yeah. it. And I love it. And it's beautiful. He's moved the tears. Nobody can argue with that experience. Um, so like I, the, the biggest mistake maybe from my perspective is, and I don't disagree with what you said, Jeff, about and that's like, a norm- the traditional what stuff. What you just explained is a normal experience. That's a normal common Human yeah experience and in in our man and woman come together right as one make children have a family and the data suggests like kids it is stronger than anything there is in the world and you need kids need their parents and 
<clears throat> it's overwhelming, like a good, healthy biological parents raising the kids is the best environment. That doesn't mean, obviously that's not the world we live in sure. where kids are abused or they're neglected or they're given up. Um, and it doesn't mean like other people in other situations, even non-traditional ones can't make the best out of a, of a terrible situation. But I don't, I think part of the pendulum swing away from some of the abuses of some of the traditions has been to be like, well, throw out all of the tradition. And I think that's what I actually disagree with you, Jeff, when you say like the Bible is being buried. And I think Harrison's speech is a, is a marker of like the pendulum is swinging a little bit back towards like, Hey, we, maybe we went too far. And so it doesn't mean the pendulum swing back is going to be all good, but I think overall there's going to be like, okay, where can we land? That's yeah. going to be good and more healthy and like realize, okay, where do we go too far? And in what ways can we reclaim sort of the, the traditions that are good? Tradition doesn't mean good on its own, but tradition is there for a reason. And it, before you throw out traditions, you want to be really careful. You want to, before you bust those, those fences down for the sake of progressing. And I'm, I like good progression. Like I've progressed in a lot of ways that I think are healthy and maybe some not healthy that I don't know about yet, but I want to be aware of that stuff. We'll tell you so, after the show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's why I hang out with you guys because you guys aren't afraid to say, "Hey, do-do. we have a list." <clears throat> Jeff, do you have the list? You brought the list. Yeah, it's <clears throat> in my back pocket. Yeah, so, but there is a move right now, like with Russell Brand, Candace Owens. Uh, I-, I mentioned Hulk Hogan, not knowing he just got baptized again, or I don't know if it's rebaptized or he Dude, got baptized for the first time. Extra Christian. So there is a little bit of momentum. The chosen is one of the most watched things in the history of the universe. You got Scorsese is going to make a film about the apostle Paul. Like there is momentum. Part of that is like, okay, there's momentum. We can make money off of that. But regardless, it's not, I think sometimes we can have a, a persecution complex and look for it and find it if we want to. But I, I think it's just a mixed bag. There's more options now. And so I the, mul- the multicultural thing yeah. is, uh, so do you, do you think it's true? The, if someone if family is under attack, is that a true statement in this society, in the United States? Sometimes. What, it, well, what do you mean by families under attack? Describe that a little more. My family's not under attack. Husband, wife, children, the nuclear family is under attack and going after the younger kids and kids, I'm sorry, kids that are in, elementary school junior high high school into college there is a a the progression the the uh the progress in society is they are finding ways to detach kids from their parents and their families and the leadership of the families and create a a kind of a laziness within society in that i mean phones are number one in detaching kids from their families because it seems normal, but it's happening. No, I'm, I, I'm with you. I think general. that's, I think that's true. Uh, some have argued that the welfare system has also contributed to single family homes because if a father was in the house, then they're not eligible for, for welfare. Certainly. And therefore uh, it, it, fractures the nuclear family. And I think that's what you're meaning. Like there, there are lots of different ways right now that are trying to attack the concept of the nuclear family and the value of, of a close family, whether it be uh, devices sucking our attention, whether it be f- financial government, financial assistance, um, rewarding divided families or, or any, or even spiritual level of, 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 just co- constantly trying to handicap people in society, which doesn't make it's like why would why would government who's supposed to represent us and they know that family is the most important thing to society and to have strength and to build a strong community. Maybe they don't know that. <laughs> to to build well, maybe they have their eye on something else. And maybe it's the almighty dollar. I don't know. But how, when how, you have, and you got to social welfare, like I, my degree was in sociology. We talked about how we'd have, uh, especially with black families, 
where like the father would be like, got to run out of the back door. So, you yeah. know, because they're coming here to check on the family with the kids and the, the, the mom. And if dad's here, then it's like, oh, sorry, no checks. Yeah. And so there, there's something there that's been going that on is so forever. Fucked up. That part of it's totally. It's, ho- it's horrible. Yeah. So how, how was it for you guys in your homes growing up? And how is it now? Like what, is, what was the dynamic when you were growing up with your mom and your dad and then versus the dynamic that you have in your own family? And I'm just going to like to focus that question a little bit more just in terms of like um, traditional um, structure or traditional housewife st- Primarily, like the the woman primarily stays at home to help raise the kids. Dad primarily goes and uh, goes out to work. Or did it look different? What did it look like in growing up for you guys? And then what does it look like for your family now? Oh, that's a good. You're a good podcaster. Go that's ahead, a good Zach. Podcasting question. Mm. Uh, I grew up in a stable Christian household, and my both my parents were married before. Both got divorced. I didn't know that. Shut the F up. Yeah. No kids. Did you not know that either? This is our friend. <laughs> I I just became a better friend, I think, by sharing that. Or no. Or worse. Am, am I in trouble? Probably worse. Could you pull the <laughs> sword out of my back? Oh, it's in so deep. <laughs> yeah, it oh, is. Oh, I can't get it out. <laughs> I didn't know this much of your identity was what? tied to my parents' future, f- past, future, past life. Did you just... Before I was he born, just peeled an onion layer back. So yeah. We, anyway, so, Mac, go ahead and continue <laughs> this because I don't know who you are. <laughs> no, that's why I'm on this couch, bitches. <laughs> what is happening? Okay. Uh, they were both married and divorced, and my mom had a pretty significant feminist kick as a result of that stuff. Oh, like, she, interesting. She she had her time like kicking and screaming like fuck the patriarchy type thing before that Good, was cool. Seriously, before that was cool, laid all Zach's. I don't even all know. of his what he is, and I can't even believe this is all happening. Right. All right, finish your story. And so I will I will make it brief. Long story, actually shorter, but a little bit longer. Uh, is they they married, and I feel like it was like, hey, we both messed this up before so let's we're in it to win it so let's do it the right way yeah so what did the right way look like and and so it it was traditional my mom was a teacher and still is almost retired but um she she taught and she did work some mostly stay at home uh we were homeschooled going till high school and that explains a lot about me probably but uh actually i think i needed it in hindsight uh, jokes aside, but my dad, you know, bringing home the bacon, dentist, that sort of thing. Oh, so, not so a you, farmer. So you not were a farmer. You were around your feminist mom a lot. Well, she wasn't a feminist at that point. She went. She swung way back. Okay. Speaking of pendulum swings. Okay. So she had her her fun, and she was rejecting. She grew up Church of Christ, like the the Church of Christ type. That's like no piano. Oh yeah, voices only. Voices only, and you be careful with that voice, sir. <laughs> Don't be using that voice like an actual instrument. So no mouth trumpets even. <laughs> no. Just... Oh, heresy! Sinners. <laughs> They're sinners amongst us. Listen to them. They use their lips for the devil. It's a it's a mouth <laughs> trumpet from Satan. Nobody likes a mouth trumpet. No. Just the devil. I do like somehow, I like that we have the Dean coming in from community <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> oh, it's the guy from Letterkenny. That's what I'm doing. Oh my God, that is. The pastor from Letterkenny. Oh, I was thinking of the Dean. You guys, the we talked about ballpark. this. We talked about this in prep. I'm we sorry. weren't going to do this. Okay. Sorry. You're okay, right. It is so, Letterkenny. So then, so anyway, tr- traditional. It, it looked more traditional. You, but your, did your mom work the whole time? Full time? Was she a full time teacher? No. Okay. No, part time, off and on, and, and some special needs stuff. And, uh, and All so right. that's translated into with Lisa and myself and our kids. It's I bring home most of the bacon, as it were. Um, we're in Southern California and we do well, but it's she works part time, but she's basically been able to. She does double duty, and this is the most impressive part because she's basically a full time mom at home and is able to work from home part time to help supplement, and so which is a lot. So she does what she was born to do and she crushes it in the business world. 
I will allow it. Thank you. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not going to fight that. But and and there would. But we have the. We both have a similar perspective in that if ideally it would be like she could not have to work at all and she'd yeah. be home with the kids. And conversely, it 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 would be different and feel different. But if she's she has some business ideas and whatnot, if something blows up and she's able to make money in a way that I can't, it's. I would not have a problem with that personally. And so maybe that's a bone throwing in the other direction where it's, it's like, yeah, it it might, it doesn't have to look traditional, but for us, it has been traditional. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the traditional aspect of a woman staying home. and Uh, Honey, you are making way too much money right now. And I am not cool. It easy. I am am not comfortable with the houses that we are able to purchase. I know, and the many, many vehicles that we now have to insure. I've I've known some couples. So many e bikes. They have separate bank accounts, and they like, oh, if you make some money, then you can have it in your own account. That's weird, huh? What is happening? Those people are divorced now. To each their own. As long as everyone is thriving and on the same page. But yeah, we we are basically traditional. All our th- our theology and whatnot it, it allows for some more progressive aspects of homemaking. Um, I'll just leave that there, so people can do their own math. But <laughs> in terms of like, it doesn't have to be like woman stay in the house make make me a sandwich. Travis Kelsey, did you guys see Travis Kelsey's response? I don't know, but all I just Harrison I Bucker? just imagine that uh, <laughs> when the kids are away, that uh, Lisa likes you to just wear an apron only and go make some pancakes in the morning. <laughs> and that. I'm not going to say that and has be, never happened. And be who you were born to be. Yes. With your butt cheeks out while you're flipping <laughs> pancakes. I've been doing squats too. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Let's go to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, could you do it in less than 10 minutes? Like, like I just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in a traditional family. My dad worked for uh, Union Pacific Railroad in Omaha, Nebraska. And my mom, she stayed at home. It was me and my sister when I was six years old uh, came Dude. along and Dude, corn fed, man. Yeah, a steak and potatoes. Oh my god, I miss miss those Omaha steaks. Um, anyway, it was just it was it was just what I knew, and I did hear of some. I did hear the word divorce from some of my friends, and uh, they were not happy campers. Mm. Um, and and then at some point, um, the end of my fifth grade year. Um, my dad actually got passed up having been with the UP for at least 12, 13 years by a woman. And it was the beginning of, um, not quotas. It was, I can't remember, but the movement had started. He got passed up. He had a master's in economics. He was really Mm. good at what he did. And, uh, he was like, what is happening and that kind of threw him sideways, and he actually ended up quitting his job. And at that moment, our family started to break. Mm. And uh, and then I ended up being a, a not so traditional family. And you know, through the next I don't know two three years, my parents, you know, we moved back to Southern California where they were from. I wasn't from mm-hmm. there. I was born and raised in Omaha. But um, yeah, they. Mom got remarried. I had stepbrothers, older stepbrothers, which is very different. Mm. They did drugs. I didn't. I kind of got involved in drinking with them at times here and there at like thirteen. Oof. Um, had no idea because I lived a very kind of very little house in the prairie until he life. said 13 i'm like what's the problem here? <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, so you had a couple drinks with the boys i uh just my my dad ended up getting remarried i moved with him because i was fed up with my mom's world that she was in i went with him and destroyed his world um uh for a year in and uh he got married then got divorced to her i'm ultimately i'm looking at this i'm like All of this is a shit show. Mm. And so, you know, knowing what tradition, knowing the the traditional family, I'm like, that functioned really well. Just as an adult, now looking back, I'm like, that functioned really well. And so now in my family, pretty much my wife and I, you know, hit a crossroads since where Jesus came in, um, coincidentally. Um, And 
it was kind of like we are never going to break like this family will never break Mm -hmm. um one because i know how horrible it would be for kids and two it'd be horrible for us and and also you know we got vows and i'm kind of a a loyalist so yeah that was that was um you know i kind of got i got definitely got both sides of tradition and brokenness and being just a latchkey kid with my sister yeah. having to go up to del taco because my mom had started an interior design business and was very successful you know great personality 35 years um but ultimately um it's like it's lack of you know just lack of confidence when you don't have both parents there and you just see it breaking so that was mm. that was that was a. Uh, that's pr- I mean, as I listen, as I listen to your story, Zach, I'm like, what the heck? Didn't even know this, but now a lot of things m- make sense. And when I think of you know my own story, I'm like, I got insecurities, and it came from mm. you know the tradition breaking. And so I'm like, I've got to hold on to this in any way I can. Was there one side that that broke more traditionally than the other? What do you mean? Like, is there is there something about your dad, like knowing enough about your story and you know, you can slap my hand if I'm off base or whatever, but is there something about what, what was the breaking of your parents and how does that sit with you now? Like, was there one party that was more at risk? Did your dad fail in a way? Did your mom fail in Um, a way? I mean, I'm look back. I mean, my, my mom, it was just a big, a big personality. I mean, she wanted, she wanted and desired big things. If you want to call it selfish, fine. If she wanted, she, you know, I think for, I, I'm looking back, almost felt like after the divorce, she was always trying to make up for it because she knew like, I shouldn't have made that choice. And and so I got to give my kids everything. Mm. And, and my dad was like, well, screw it. Your mom didn't want to, you know, do this. So we, we and I'm like, dad, you're so passive hmm. like what the hell you you resigned from life and i guess my mom was his fuel and she was his stability and when he became unstable and quit a, jo- a solid job you know i just saw um my mom you know looking back like listening to the stories that i've heard I'm like mom she's like we're done you're not stable anymore i can't do this i gotta go find stability and I got to go start something or find someone or something. Um, and my dad just, he was like, well, I can function alone. Just passive. Yeah. I'll just grind it out for the rest of my life and make this work. And he still does to this day. Hmm. I mean, he's <laughs> he's got plenty of, he's got plenty of money and equity and a home. And I'm like, he's still like, I, I don't know if I have enough. Like, I, I'm like. Jeez, Dad, why don't God. you go get a friend or a girlfriend or something? <laughs> oh, it's just brutal to watch. Oh, man. So, and t- together, they were fantastic. To see them together in a room with other people, it was fantastic. My my mom made my father a better man, and my dad made my mom confident because he mm-hmm. did what he did. And they just pulled the ripcord. Yeah. So, that, and that... You know, that has shaped me completely. So tradition is, and when I look, I'm like, yeah, I've been, I've seen three or four families that I've lived through. Yeah, it it ain't good when you got stepbrothers and sisters and new moms and dads. You're just like, F you, who are you? Like, you're not my blood. It adds degrees of difficulty that, not that it can't be overcome, but it's it's like, uh, It's 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 not ideal. And yeah. And I could see why you're in a place where it's like, men, get your shit together. Don't be passive. Yeah. Uh, 100%. I'm glad you didn't say fantastic. Finish your drink. I thought about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Andy. I did think about it. It was on my heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, Thank you, Jeff. My parents, um, I'll, I'll kind of combine them. I think my parents' uh, story is, is similar to Lindsay and our story, just in that like, uh, both went to college uh, before having kids. Both actually, both worked as teachers, and then 
uh, when I was born, my mom shifted to some part-time stuff, but then eventually they, they made the decision that, um, they, that she wanted to stay home and be full-time mom. And my dad wanted to support her doing that too. They both like felt the same. And so he actually took, uh, at some point he took a second job where he was, so he would teach during normal school hours and then maybe come home for a couple of hours or just go straight to the office and he became a, he was a psychologist, uh, counselor. And so he, then he would counsel people for another like four or five hours at night and then come home super late, um, to allow her to be able to stay at home so she could be full-time mom. And, um, the version of that, that Lindsay and I have done is, uh, same sort of thing. First got married, lived the dink lifestyle style, double income, no kids, never check the bank account. Cause it's a beautiful thing. Oh my gosh. You're just living life. So huge. Uh, I mean, relatively speaking, right, <laughs> right. we're going out to Denny's anytime <laughs> we want to. <laughs> um, but then but you're then, getting surf and turf. <laughs> Most people only do one. Then we, uh, then we had our first kiddo. Gwen and I think Lindsay kept her job for two and a half years, but then she, she, at this time she had her own business. She brought on another employee and, um, to help kind of like ease things, which, you know, when you bring on an employee, it's not like you're making more money. You are now making less money and, and, but the, the trade-off was worth it. Then we had Lila and the day, um, I think it was the day that we found out that we were pregnant with Lila, Lindsay, um, put her business up for sale and sold it. I may be a little bit off, but just know that once the second kid came around, she sold her business and it was like, Hey, I just wanted to be full-time mom. And I remember at the time I was young. I wasn't, I wasn't even 30 years old and I had my own, my own small business. I was running a design company and company is a stretch. <laughs> it was mainly <laughs> me and occasionally like I would bring in a couple other freelancers for other projects, but I was like hustling, trying to get stuff. And I remember- It's a couple ha- steps above bros, Bibles, and beer. It's a couple steps above. And um, the way I describe it sometimes is like, we didn't financially, we didn't crash the plane, but the landing gear hit a few times. Mm. And But I remember feeling that like pressure going, mm. okay, she's going to be at home with the kids. And we both want that. We both think that's really important. We don't want someone else raising our kids. And I get it. Like other families do it differently. This is just how we, how we thought and, and what we felt strongly about. But I remember that internal pressure of going like, okay, I've, like, I've got to make it work. I've got to now keep three other people alive and mm. sheltered and, and healthy. So that's what we've done. As the kids got older, um, like Lindsay always kept one or two of her like plant design clients doing interior plants for them. And they were like really good, super good paying clients. Mm-hmm. And then as the kids kind of went into junior high and now, and then now in high school, she ramped back up and over COVID got her landscapers con- license and like created a landscaping company out of thin air, which is crazy to me. And now she does that um, probably three days a week, I would say. So it's, it's part-time. She's working part-time, but um, it still is flexible enough because it's her own gig to allow her to, if she needs to go and pick up kids, be with kids, right. do do that. That still becomes the primary. And it puts a lot of pressure on her because she's got to balance those two things. Um, I work as my own gig and that's plenty of pressure on its own um, to be able to take care of those pieces. But um, that's, that's kind of how we get. And, and both, so I, I mentioned that for my family, Lindsay's family as well was similar. Dad worked, mom was mom. Right. Uh, and, and so those, there's no way that those traditions didn't influence us and influence the values that we had and what we cared about and what we wanted to see in our families. It was one thing I, I didn't actually, um, expand on and that, that was our family. Like I've been a teacher for 20 years and I ran a soccer program before that just, and for the first three years of our marriage, I did both. Yeah. And, um, but you know, as, as time went on, I'm actually, I, we probably got to a breaking point where it was, it was going to be divorce and everything was just going to be a train wreck or, or it was going to be, um, you know, what I did, which was I, I quit 
um, soccer program and running camps and stuff and just focused on teaching yeah. and was home more. But, um, you know, Tanya, she, you know, after giving birth to two or three of our kids, you know, uh, and maybe the fourth, I don't remember when she started, but she started doing a, a doula business, which is, you know, she's a birth coach and she was helping mothers bring their babies into the world. And She's so, like, I'm pretty good at <laughs> give, giving birth to these babies. Right. I can help other people give birth to their babies. And so, the, but it, but it was a, a really <laughs> good balance. That's my Tanya impression. And you know that, and we grew up com- like we it. grew up completely different. Yeah. And so there, that has its own, you know, challenges. But ultimately, you know, she was able to, and I was like, that's great. You yeah. know, and and believe me, over the last ten years, it's come in handy. Like. Wait, you got you got some money? <laughs> Can I have some? <laughs> uh, and so that was the you know that's always a good that's always a good thing to be like, hey, we just play we just paid for this trip based off what you just made. This is fantastic. Um, but ultimately, I we made a decision a long time ago. It's like, yeah, you're, yeah. you're not going to work full time, yeah. and me working full time, and we just give our kids to somebody so somebody else can raise them. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so that it was, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I have so much, um, revere for my wife yeah, and, and also traditional marriage and tr- a traditional family that like, this is something that is golden. We cannot ever let go of this you and know, have to pass it on to our own children. As we, as we've been describing this, I'm realizing like it, there is there is significant sacrifices from both um, the husband and the wife in in that in that traditional marriage um, setup. B- both both are are making big trade offs. For men, it is if my for my wife, especially if you live around here, maybe in like lower pl- places with lower cost of living, it might not be as much of a factor. But but around here, it, if 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 it's just the husband that's working, dude, you're either working eighty hours a week, you know, or somehow you're a Bitcoin bro and you crushed it, and maybe something in between there. But the point is, like, there's a sacrifice there of your time and your availability to your family. Like, your presence is the trade off, right? Right. And mm-hmm. the flip side would be on um, on the woman's side if she is ambitious about a career for whatever reason and and she she would choose to to make those trade offs and also like there's no breaks when you're a mom you don't get to you don't get to go out and have a union smoke break like you do if you're a traditional man working yeah. on working in the fields so, sorry 4 year old Samantha it's my uh, it's my break time yeah, to take it back to Harrison Bucker I, I think you know the idea of the you said something that kind of got me thinking about yes women wives getting married and having children going to work and knowing your kids are at home there, there's something that doesn't sit right with women or husbands like why why would we do this why would we bring kids into the world and then the person who brought them into the world and actually has the ability to feed them we would do the trade off to where we can make more money. I can't speak for other women. I don't know. I don't know what their their feelings are about their kids being watched. And like, I, I want to. I do want to be careful. Actually, You're like, that's disappointing, I, Andy. I was I'm hoping not, you would. I think that's what Harrison Butker was speaking to. That speaking for that, other women. No, speaking to to traditional family that yeah. I, that we're all affirming here. Yeah, that is really. But it's. I don't want to lose what you were no, saying, go, Andy. Go ahead. The point that I was trying to get to is like, I know lots of people whose their families are structured in a way that they that mom and they've made a decision, mom that we need we both need to work to to be able to make it work to be down here to be in Southern California, right? For example, and not even in a wealthy way. Like it's wealthy relative to the world. It's way wealthy, but it's totally middle class. And Southern California middle class is like a different ball game. Yeah. There's not a lot of one person working. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is it, they, they, people in those scenarios can, can be, feel great about it and like happy. Yes. Thank goodness. I've got someone to raise my kids for me. And they can also be torn. They could be torn with it. 
they could be like, ah, this is a hard trade off. I, I don't love this. I wish I didn't have to make this trade off, but I do. And so like, I, I, I know, I know of people personally who fall in both of those camps. Some are, have, have no problem with it. And some it's, they wish it was different. Yeah. And, and if, if the goal is at all costs, the traditional view, man works, woman stays home. But to make that happen, the man is totally absent from his kids' lives, which you were sort of touching on like 60, 70, 80 hours a week, but we can make this work. It's traditional, but no, the kids don't know you and you don't know them. You're missing all the milestones because you're bringing home. It's, it's a, that's, that's less ideal than a compromise situation where it's like, Hey, let's do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We'll work together. We'll communicate. So I don't look at it as a binary. Like it should be. I also don't, I, as relatively theologically progressive as people see me, or maybe I am sometimes the traditional aspect. Like I, I have zero problem with that. And I think 95% of people don't have a problem with a family being traditionally like the man is making the money. The woman is nurturing and staying home with the kids. Like there are biological drivers for some of this that goes back to hunter gatherer times. Um, so why do we have a problem with Harrison Butker saying what he said to, uh, to women? Just I'd, because they're finishing a degree. If I'm picking nits, it's just just keep it personal to you and don't say, hey, you guys all have plans, but maybe you're better off just going home and creating a family. And so he 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 universalized it a little bit in a way. Because it's a universal th- thing. Generally. Right. And he was generally saying that. But, and so I'm I'm not offended like some people are, but also it's like, you would have, there'd be no complaints if you're just like, this is my story. My wife had plans. Things changed when we yeah. came together and had a family. I I don't doubt his story about his wife. Like this is, it, it's very meaningful for him and it's powerful. And I, I think it would have been more powerful. Everyone's distracted by the little like, oh, he's like going against, he's, he's like part of the patriarchy. There's a little bit of those elements where people are distracted by a couple things he said about universal, the royal we women. Yeah. Maybe you do this and it would have been better served if it's just like, just tell your story and that will be enough. What people don't know is a year before that, he was at Benedictine College and they were interviewing him. They invited him back because of the fact that he spoke on his faith and family and so they had him back. I, yeah. I, I bet very, very few people even know that he was actually at that college a year before he gave that commencement speech. And so they knew what they were getting and they knew that it was good for their people. And the, they're not, they're not the ones complaining by no, the way. Yeah, no, I, I not, think, not yeah. at all. It's yeah. outside influence. I bet if he was here on the podcast right now and we interviewed him, if, if we, if we asked him, Hey Harrison is, is the spirit of what you're trying to say, or are you trying to encourage women who may feel inclined towards wanting to, to go this direction of, of raising a family and being the primary homemaker in the, in the relationship, in the marriage, but you feel like that's being like somehow that's less that you would be looked on as doing less or not taking advantage of all you could be. If you're feeling that way, let me tell you the story of our family and my wife isn't less and she doesn't feel like she's less because she's chosen this. I think that would have, maybe that's kind of what you're saying. Like it would have landed a little bit differently. Yeah. So Harrison, next time, (laughs) I think he said it perfectly. You can reach out to us for a consultation and then all the haters would have understood really what you're saying and would have broadened the message that you were going for. I think his message was perfect. And I, I think this is a good, while we haven't like directly disagreed, I think people can tell like there's a little, difference the way we hold these things and that's okay like some of the feedback we got over the russell brand stuff is like these guys are just haters and i'm like okay jeff and i were sort of critical of russell brand andy you were more more nuanced and on the other side it's like obviously layers layers upon layers (laughs) just stay out of his onion layers that he's been pulling yeah all my my parents dirty secrets name's probably frisco I don't even know it. I don't, what does that mean? I don't even know what I that don't know, means. But we don't even know you. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I thought, am I supposed to know what Frisco means? 
Doesn't even matter. <laughs> Feels like it's code for something. We're going to tar and feather you after this. Oh, man. Okay. Well, this has been a good podcast. Yeah, I like that you drove us in a personal way, Andy. That's like what you, I... It's good. Like It's fun to comment on and do a little bit of the clickbaity stuff, but when we can keep it like, okay, what does it mean to you now? And how does that apply? Like I like that. Sometimes I... Uh, it. Well, and that's how we learn about each other, right? That's true. And now the listener... I guess so. This guy. Jerry Crater. The third... <laughs> Dude, uh, I, I accidentally said your dad's name. That's so I didn't intend. Oh, you didn't mean to. All of a sudden, I was like, "Shoot, I got to fix this. How do I fix this?" Funny the, way to do it. The third. The third. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I wasn't named after my dad. Like, I have no problem with Gerald, but uh, Gerald is a little bit less, or not. It's not for me. Jerry's a dope name. Yeah, Jerry is. Gerald Ford. God, you're old as shit. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking back <laughs> to the old to 1800s. Zachary Taylor. Are we just naming old presidents? <laughs> What's going on? Hundreds. The 18. There you go, Zachary Taylor. That's By way the way, back. Corrections and retractions. <laughs> okay. um, Jolly Roger. Uh, Roger did not mean the F word. Uh, it meant the devil. It was like, ooh, you're gonna, you're gonna get devil. a Rogering. Yeah. I, I, th- okay, I swear there's something to the F word part of it. Austin Powers. Yes. What does he say? I think there's a Rogering reference. To I think maybe he stuff. just made that up, though. Maybe no, it's not real. Maybe. It is I real. Mean, I think there's something to it, but also the Austin devil. Austin Powers is a nonfiction story. Also, Puritans <laughs> hate sex, so maybe the devil is seen as sex. Like, you only have sex Randy. if you have to. Let's get Randy. Right, That's let's, what he said. Let's do a little bit of feedback. Okay. Unless you guys have uh, Only final... the important people, though. Pick your favorite ones. What stuck out? Well, we got we did the lukewarm Christians episode. This is one you missed, and I'm sure you listened to it and absorbed it, and you took some notes. You learned from your understudy, Colin, <laughs> uh, Dave Millsap. So, parents, oh, so this is in reaction to you talking about the unbelievable power of a family whose whose kid was murdered, and the family forgives. Oh, yeah, how powerful that is. Yeah. He said, so parents of murdered children can forgive the murderer without requiring innocent bloodshed, but, and he, he's pushing back. I'll explain it for Chad. Uh, God, some people's view of God is God can't forgive without innocent bloodshed. And I think that's a brilliant comment. I don't. I think he's totally mixing two very different things. It's not our job to pay for other people's sins with sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's not our job. Our job is to forgive other people. And that is mostly for us, by the way, Mm -hmm. but (laughs) it's for the forgiver. Salvation is not our, uh, the salvation of others is not the responsibility for us to bear. So he's mixing those two concepts. I don't think, well, I I think it's a worthy mix up or I think it's, I think it's good because, uh, I've come to believe that God can just forgive. God doesn't need to kill in order to forgive. I, th- gonna- I think that's a barbaric version of God that is not that far removed from we have to satisfy God by throwing a virgin into a volcano. Doesn't or didn't? All the time. I think God is, if God c- is eternal and cares about us, I don't think God changed. I think our what we think he's doing is changing. And I think in the right direction, slowly but surely. But that's just where I'm at. So I don't think forgiveness, the word means forgiveness. You're letting something go. You don't require anything in return. Otherwise, it's not forgiveness. So that's just where I'm at. And that's that's where I think, I, I, obviously, Dave Millsap is deconstructing. Um, and I'm thankful for his comments. And so that's one. where it's coming from. So, yeah. Comment on my comment, Dave. That's right. Respond to the response. Uh, Michelle Boutel. Oh, Whoa. I thought you were going to say, Ob- I thought you were going to say Obama. <laughs> Michelle Obama commenting on our podcast. Uh, same, same on the lukewarm Christians. Listen to a little bit of Father Richard Rohr. I think it might be helpful. Yes, I love Richard Rohr. Wait, they're giving us, uh, a, you know what, you should really do this so you can help yourselves. They're giving us homework. He's a heretic to some and he's brilliant to some. Uh, why? 
Does she say why? She just says go read a book? No, it's it's just related to lukewarmity. I don't know. You know? But she doesn't say anything. She just says nope. go, go read this? Just go read this. Could have ma- put Michelle. a mask, mask on. It'll help. Be more specific. At Cam Smith, not a bot, LOL. Oh, uh, my dog. Cam Smith <laughs> in the house. And this was on the Lukewarm Christians. Uh, you all say you don't do a lot of Bible reading because that was a lot of Bible happened in that that episode. Mm. So he was complimenting us uh, on saying, yeah, sorry, Cam, we're not going to read the Bible that much. But could have been the influence of Colin. <laughs> yeah, the wizard. Yes. It could have been, but it wasn't. Yeah. Oh. And then a couple on Russell Brand's first week as a Christian episode, uh, Mike in... 2968 and brand's message will reach many people possibly y'all need to chill you are not better christians than him oh did we say we were no <laughs> should we we were <laughs> <laughs> no we said he was a baby christian that like set your expectations accordingly why would yeah. we expect him to I be know. like I a love seasoned, these comments a deep seasoned mature christian who now understands the complexity and depth of his faith now and i consider myself a deep seasoned mature christian but to to other christians i recognize i'm a total heretic so it's like you're so deep seasoned yes you're a heretic just put me in the fryer season me up put some breading on me some of that kinders he is going to hell and at botox nice what b a b e a u x talks i uh, like that oh, Bo- oh my gosh <laughs> is it like b e a u t a l k s like bo talks to yeah, you b e beautiful dang that's awesome yeah. good one russell tries to be humble in his walk it isn't perfect which is something he tries to show and then uh, frank forrester is this like edgy christian gatekeeping that's a new one all right wait edgy christian gatekeeping like we're gonna we're only gonna let the edgy christians in yeah or we we are the edgy christians deciding who's in in the edginess or in like what are we i yeah i don't know which gate what's on the other side of the gate i'm so interested give us more yeah they won't um (laughs) michelle obama there were actually a lot of comment there were several comments from catholics Catholic elite, elite elitism is real. What's uh, Catholic elitism? Of oh, anti Protestant. <laughs> like, oh, I see. It was like old school. Like I wouldn't expect Protestants to, yeah. <laughs> to be able to understand this theology. We got a couple in that ballpark. Which theology of lukewarmness? Uh, yeah, just talking about theology in general, what it means to be a good Christian. We were bouncing those topics around, uh, and we we did get a couple where like yeah, oh these. These Protestants, these small Protestants. Hey, it's not because we're Protestants. It's because we're dumb. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let the record reflect. <laughs> Thank you for your judgment, though. Yeah, but there was a lot, and there's a ton on Instagram I couldn't get to. Like, at a certain point, this is just like, I got to just pick and choose a few. Yeah, no, it's good. But I love the superstars, Cam and Dave Millsap, keeping it real, keeping it coming. And uh, I know they listen to the episodes yeah. And so some of these other comments are just like hear a snippet and they assume something and they just say it. But yeah, Cam and Dave, it. you're building your plaque one comment at a time. We'll have it behind us eventually you're over somebody's up, shoulder. You're storing up treasures in my heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Our heaven's going to be this wall. You'll be next to this beautiful guitar. You sign your name on the guitar. <laughs> That's how it's going to work. Okay. Let's Guys, get out of here. This was good. Yeah. Jeff, missed you last week. I'm glad you're back. Gosh. Yeah. That was at the AT- in the ATL at a Braves game, and it was phenomenal. The- Atlanta's a beautiful city. You didn't invite us. Yeah, thanks. It was a teacher thing. I've taught millions of people. Yeah. On every, this podcast. Every week on <laughs> this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> That's how the one it means to be a real Christian. All right. Brosbiblesandbeer at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, speak S- pipe. Dot com slash bros. If yep. you want to leave us a voicemail, have we checked that? <laughs> we haven't got one okay. yet. <laughs> the comment section though is still awesome. We love it. Please continue to leave us, uh, leave us feedback in the comments. And actually we're going to try this out. If you would like to leave a question that you'd like us to answer within the comments. And if you do that, we'll go through, we promise this week, we'll go through and take a look at them and we will pick one out 
to hopefully address. And, uh, you know, we may spend a little time on it or a long time. I don't know. If it's good enough, it might be an entire podcast. It could be. So, And then you definitely get a plaque with your name on it. In yep. Zach, Zach's heaven. In Zach's heaven. In my heaven. <laughs> Plaques in Zach's heaven. All right. For Zach, Jeff, I am Andy. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Grace. Peace. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Oh, God, we got one. Oh, that's down for the I don't like when, when uh, 